Yay, you made it to the last video. So welcome to video 10 of the Intro to ArcGIS Online video series. In this video, we are going to talk about ArcGIS story maps. Like with anything, the best way to learn is to jump into it and actually start building. ArcGIS Story Map is a web-based application that combines interactive maps and multimedia content to tell a story. And after that story map is created, you can either embed it into a website or have it as a standalone, which is what we're seeing right now. Story Map is very similar to any type of blogging website where you pick a component and each component, let's say it's text, you can customize it. You can have image aligned the way you want in your story. And there's also a cool feature called image gallery and this thing called express map. So there's a lot of capability with story maps to create not just beautiful maps, but an experience of sharing a narrative. Now, another cool feature that were added was this timeline. So here's just a simple timeline of me getting a dog in November 8th. I got a pandemic dog. And this is simply just another tool to help convey a story. Now, the reason why I think people use Story Map and why Story Map looks really slick is because of its immersive component. Now, using the immersive component, I decided to showcase what each immersive component is about. So right now I am using an immersive component called the Sidecar Dog Panel. And on the left hand side here, we have the dog panel that has the narration. I've also included a button and later on you'll see I've included media. So pictures and videos embedded inside on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, I can put another main media. But in this case, I showed an example of what a sidecar dog panel would look like in action as the user is scrolling. So this example button here takes you to this GIF example I have shown here. So there's the sidecar docked panel and there's also the sidecar floating panel. Now every page it goes through, you get to see a new media content as a main page. And as that page transition or as a user is scrolling, the page has this slow fade animation that looks as if a GIF is playing in the background while the user is scrolling. So it has that very cool effect. Now the next immersive component is called Slideshow. And instead of scrolling, Slideshow immersive component allows the user to click through. So they click and see a new map or a new image and a new text box appear as well. So the next immersive component is the guided tour. And this is great template if you have a story to tell and it's very location centric. So there are different layouts you can pick from. You can have a map focus one or a media focus, but essentially as your user is scrolling, the background will change or the media will change, but the background of the map will change based on the number and block of content it's on. And similar to the guided tour, the last immersive component is the explorer tour. And it's very location centric as well, but it doesn't necessarily need to have a sequence. So you're allowing the audience the freedom to pick a point of interest based on the thumbnails and the pictures on the left hand side here. And then they can click on the thumbnail of interest and the map will zoom right in to where the thumbnail is positioned on the map. So those are the immersive component template you can use for your storytelling. Now, if none of these immersive components suits your need for your story, you can always try out the other story map component. For example, we have the swipe functionality. So this is where you can have a swipe between two maps or an image, and it allows people to compare the maps and photos. So similar to what we did in ArcGIS instant apps. The next functionality or the next component we have is map action. And this is essentially where you create a button and you allow the user to click on the button and they can see a particular layer on the map or a particular area on your map. Now in this example, in the video here, it shows you the different types of giraffe range and the user can select on it and it filters out that giraffe range and also zooms and pans into that area. So that's a really cool feature you can use. Another component you can use is purely audio. 
So a lot of people use this component to add interview clips to go along with an image or a photo. Lastly, I want to highlight the feature called collection. Now a key to making a good story map is keeping it concise and short. There's no limit on how long a story map is, but there is a limit to the patience of your reader. So let's say you have a story and you can break it down into different parts. Do that. Break it down into different story maps. So this is where collection comes in. It can help you combine different story maps of your choice and add it to this gallery looking view for your user to browse through different story maps. So with one URL, you can share that URL, but your audience gets to see the different story parts. Now here's an example of a collection. You'll notice if I click on a story map on the right here as a collection, it takes me through different story maps that the author of the story map has put together. So that was a very fast introduction to story map. Let's start building one. So here I am in ArcGIS Online in my content. I'm going to go to the app drawer, select story maps and this turquoise icon here. And it'll bring me to an interface where I can build a story map. So usually you'll have story maps you've built before. I have a Rose Family Schitt's Creek story map that we can save for another time, but let's select new story and we can start from scratch. Now, the first thing you'll notice when you start a new story is that you need to give the title of a story. So I am going to give a title of Assessing the Community Housing in Toronto. That would be my title. I can have a short description, analysis of Toronto community housing location. I'm sure you guys can come up with a better name. Next, I'm going to give this area an image. So I'm going to go to add cover image, browse to my files, and I picked out an image. This one here, I'm going to hit add. So we have a really big image up top above our title. That's perfect. That's how people will start off reading our story map. Now to add a component, we simply have to click on this plus sign here. Select the component we want. I'm going to select text and give this story an intro. So I've already went ahead and copied the City of Toronto description from Wikipedia. So with the text pasted, I can select a word within the paragraph, bold it, give it some characteristic. I'm going to choose a blue here. So these are all things I can do with text. I can even hyperlink a text if I want and maybe even change the styles of the text. So I have heading, subheading, paragraph, large paragraph, bullet, number, quotes. These are all options I can choose from. Now the next thing I want to show you is the express map. So going in here, I'm going to select map. And I mentioned this before briefly, but I didn't go into detail. But with story map, the good thing is that you can create express map. And these express maps are basically an interface for you to quickly draft up a map and show where something is. So let's do that. I'm going to show the location of Toronto. I can go into the search bar here and search for Toronto, Ontario. And you can see that this is the first option here. Hit add to map. You can even give it an image for Toronto and hit done. So depending on how I want it, maybe I want my map to look at this extent. So same thing with our map viewer, where we zoom into or zoom out to, that's the extent our viewers are going to see or our audience member are going to see. So let's hit done. And now you'll see my map. Now I can adjust the size of my map depending on how my story map is laid out. I can even put text beside the map and maybe copy this down, paste it here and show kind of the story map layout that I want. Now in this map here, I can actually get the user to pan around. And what's really cool is actually if I go back into edit, I can add text to my map, kind of almost like sketching my map and drawing on an actual paper map. I can do lines, arrows, a bunch of things we could do, but we don't have the time to cover. 
However, it is there and the resources are available on YouTube if you just search on Express Map ArcGIS Story Maps. So that's it. And notice my text box stayed the same. When I click on the point here, it expands my map and shows me the picture I uploaded. So exiting out of my map here, I'm going to add a new component. So clicking on that, I'm going to choose Immersive Component. I'm going to pick Sidecar and choose the dock panel. And notice I can always change it later. Inside the dock panel, I'm going to paste some text. So the text I'm going to be copying from would be here. Maybe I'll just copy this here, exit out from it, just paste some text. I don't really have a story, but it is a good idea to have your story written out and your image and video as well as map picked out before you start adding in. But I just want to show you what adding things look like. So I have a link. I have a link of a photo. So I'm going to paste that in, hit add, and you'll see my image comes in and it looks really nice. I can play around, change the sizes of my panels. I can even switch it around if I want it on this side. I'm going to leave it as this is. This is something new for me. The next thing I'm going to do is add a new page. So I can click on new slide and this will give me the same template where I can add things in. So I can add a map, video, whatnot on the narration panel. This is what I'm going to start calling it, the narration panel. And my multimedia panel, I can continue putting in multimedia that are image, video, maps. I can even embed something or add a swipe map. What I'm going to do is add a map. And the map we're going to add is the map we've been working on in the past couple of videos. So that's the affordability map. What I want to show in this map is the median household income. So right now it's showing me the Toronto community housing, which is not what I want. The Toronto real estate, I'm going to turn that off and leave the Toronto median household income in there. Now remember, what I see here is what my audience member will see, so let's center it. And then I have other options where I can add bookmarks, I can add a search bar in the map, legend, That's I think that's always helpful to add. And then we can start placing the map in. So this is where my map is. Now something cool I could do is maybe get the map to zoom into a particular area, so I can say this is a map showing the median household income of Toronto neighborhoods. Oops. And in my next slide, I can focus on a neighborhood. So what I'm going to do is select more options, duplicate the slide because I'm just using the same map. So now I have two, three slides. So number two, number three. And in my number three, I'm going to hit edit. And the extent of my map, I'm going to zoom into a different section. So maybe I want to zoom into the downtown core and then place map. So now it has that zoom. But as I transition between the two slides, it does a very gentle zoom. So now in this text here, I can say this part of Toronto has a higher median household income as well as the most expensive property. Now, just because I'm not showing the property data set here, what I could do is introduce map action, which is something I mentioned before. I'm going to select map action because I do have a map on my media content panel. So here I'm going to describe this map action type real estate map. What I want to do is click on edit, which brings me to a new map window. What I'm going to do is instead of household income, turn on the real estate layer. I'm going to hit save action. Now I have a button here for people to click on to show the real estate layer. So what I want to do next is add a new slide. And this time I'm going to embed a website with a URL. And the URL I'll be using is 
the instant app that we created earlier. So what we should be able to see is the instant app with the swipe map. So notice how I brought in an application we built and I embed it using the URL. So now we have a swipe map. Even though swipe map was a option for us to embed and create, but I already have one, so why not? I'm flying through the materials right now, but hopefully you get the idea how easy it is to add a component. And I highly suggest just playing around and building an actual story map. Maybe build a story map of a vacation that you went to. That's something you could do. So lastly, I want to mention that story maps can be customizable. So if I were to go into design here, I get to see that I can change the cover of my image. So let's look at this here. I get a bigger view. I can get a side by side cover image. I actually like this more. I can introduce navigation and navigation just helps the reader jump to a particular page faster. It would be along here, but because I don't have any heading text, you're not seeing any navigation text here. The credits are the section where you accredit a certain picture or information that usually exists at the bottom of the story map. So if we could quickly scroll down all the way to the bottom, this is where your credits are. So you can turn it on, you can turn it off. It's really up to you. Finally, the themes. The look and feel of your story map is customizable. You have the standard customization. Here is the black theme, the blue theme, this beige theme. I kind of like the black theme here. But you can also create your own themes. Now that's a whole different tutorial, but like the story map, once you start building it, it's very intuitive to customize your themes. I quickly skimmed through the basic of story map to show you what's possible with this application. And I can't stress enough that there are additional resources you can use. Now there are the blog posts, as well as the YouTube videos, which I think are perfect materials to learn from because they have really quick short videos of showing you a component or how to configure a component. You can also follow at ArcGIS Story Maps on Twitter because the Story Map development team does an update almost every other week, so they are constantly listening to their user and adding more capabilities. This concludes the video series of Intro to ArcGIS Online. We definitely covered a lot from prepping open data, analyze the data, and then visualizing it on a map. Once we're done with the map, we took it and built an application to share with our audience member. We even learned how to use story maps to tell a story with maps. Although we spent quite a bit of time and the sun is down, we probably explored only 30% of ArcGIS online capabilities. There's still a lot of mapping functionalities, different app builders that we didn't get to explore. So stay curious, find something interesting, and start building some maps. Now, if you want to connect with me, you can find me on Twitter at MappingMing. I'm also on LinkedIn, and you can also email me at miho at esri.ca. So until next time, happy mapping!